Hi there, this is going to be a short video on the Heartland Peninsula in the County of Devon, United Kingdom, principally as a guide to the use of the Heartland Heliport. But also, the second half of the video will take a look at some of the landmarks that you'll find in the Heartland Peninsula if you're coming for a day trip. The Heartland Peninsula is located here, on the northwest Devon coast with the Bristol Channel and Celtic Sea. The nearest town to the north is Biddeford and to the south, Bude. Both great places to visit and stay in their own right. The peninsula is quite remote and is a bit of a challenge to reach. And you reach it via the A39 trunk road, regardless of which direction you're coming from. If you're coming from Bude, here's a tip. Do not follow your sat-nav, as it will take you on a fairly tortuous route packed full of farm tracks, money tracks and single carriage roads that will double your travel time. Both directions, you need to find the B3248 junction and then you just follow the signs for Lundy Heliport or Heartland Heliport. It's the same place. You'll know you're going in the right direction because from the A39 onwards, you should be able to see the Heartland Point Naps Radar Dome. More about that later in the video. You have about four miles to travel, which will take you about 25 minutes. So you'll need to factor that into your check-in time. There is no public transport to Heartland Heliport. Local taxis know where it is and they will pick you up on appointment, but they charge an absolute fortune. You're best going by car. You will arrive at Heartland Point at this toll booth. Now, like all airports, there is no escaping parking charges. But unlike, say, London Heathrow Airport, here there is no ANPR parking eye and £150 penalties. At Heartland, you will simply be met by this lovely old lady from Blagden Farm, who will charge you £3 a day parking. There are also deals available if you are a Lundy traveller for a 5, 7, 14 day stay, etc. The booth is cash only. For day trippers, this gate is closed on non-flying days in the winter, but you can park for free in the National Trust car park about 500 metres back up the road, and it's on Google Maps. OK, I think I'll hand over from voice over me to on the ground me. OK, to start our journey off then, we're going to have to take a helicopter route to Lundy. And the only place to do that is this place, Heartland Point, right out on the north coast of Devon in the United Kingdom. It's not an international airport, we're right out the sticks here. It's about half an hour drive from the nearest small town, and this heliport only serves Lundy. We're going to drop the car off and then head to the heliport. And this is Heartland Heliport. You can stop at this five bar gate, drop your luggage off before parking your car up, and it saves you walking back up the hill with your luggage. The heliport, although small, functions like any other airport and is CAA regulated. The yellow line denotes the difference between landside and airside. These huts are for ground crew and other freight handling facility. The passenger terminal and check-in is located in this building here. But don't worry, there are plenty of ground crew around to show you the process. From the heliport gate here, having dropped off your luggage, you now drive 250 metres further down the hill to the Heartland car park located here. Day trippers, this is also your car park. You can park anywhere you can find a space in this car park. Big tip here, you're on the edge of a very steep cliff, so if you don't want your car to become Atlantic sea traffic, ensure that your handbrake works and is fully applied. And I would recommend you leave your vehicle in gear if you're a manual and make sure you select park if you're an automatic. Although the main gate to the car park is padlocked at night and therefore theft of your vehicle is unlikely, it is not a secure car park. So be sensible and don't leave valuables on display. Head back up to the baggage terminal and check in and you'll be given your flight number and a rough time you'll be flying. Pay very strict attention to the baggage rules for size and weight. They're absolutely ruthless at Heartland. And for good reason. Helicopters have very tight tolerances for baggage size and weight limits. After check-in, there is a mandatory flight safety briefing and video to watch, which is okay. The terminal has a small cafe and also has toilet facilities while you're waiting for your flight. Aircraft are not haggard at Heartland and they will fly in from a larger airport to start operations. So the day I was filming, the aircraft is a Castle Air Augusta Westland 109, which can carry up to six passengers per flight. For Lundy transfers, there may be over 10 flights in one day, so you can find yourself with a bit of time on your hands before your flight.
the ground crew will upload and unload the freight and refill the aircraft before calling the passengers forward. Heartland is very, very well run. You really don't have to think about what you need to do. The flight time to Lundy Island, which is probably where you're going to be going if you're using this airfield, is about 15 minutes across water. The aircraft is twin engine and is rated for overwater flight. Be warned that the arrival facilities at Lundy are much more primitive than those at Heartland. Okay, for the remainder of the, of the video, I'm going to cater to those of you who aren't flying, who simply want to come out to the Heartland Peninsula for a day trip. Heartland is an area of outstanding natural beauty. Also, if you're sub to my channel, hint, hint, if you're not, please subscribe. You'll know that my channel specializes in history, 20th century conflict, and also the Cold War. So let me show you now the hidden story behind Heartland Peninsula. Frankly, I couldn't have picked a worse day to showcase the highlights of Heartland Point and film my B-roll. Mother Nature is really trying her best to blow me over the edge of the cliffs, or at least snatch my GoPro out of my hand with gale force winds. So I've included this clip purely for physical comedy benefit. Yeah, obviously I live to tell the tale, but unfortunately no more live vlogs in this video due to the high wind. First landmark, which we've seen on the drive-in, is this imposing structure. It looks quite menacingly military, like an early warning system, doesn't it? Well, actually, it's a bit more boring and mundane than that. This is the Hartland Point UK Civil Aviation Authority National Air Traffic Service radar facing out towards the Atlantic, built in the late 1990s. Like all 21st century radar, this site is completely unmanned and automated and secured with a high security perimeter fence, sending all its data feed into the National Air Traffic Control Centre, West Drayton in London. It is a testament to how much technology has progressed in the past hundred years that you can now even view this radar's feed on the internet. What is now the NAT site was once something completely different. It was, for a time, RF Heartland Point, a ground-controlled intercept radar station for the Cold War, designed to detect Soviet incoming nuclear bombers and to vector RF fighter aircraft onto them to shoot them down. From the early 1950s to the mid-1960s, Harlow Point was part of the UK's Rota Early Warning Radar Network. But by the mid-1960s, the technology and threat had moved on. Instead of slow-flying Soviet nuclear bombers, now the threat from the east was fast-moving intercontinental ballistic missiles. By 1967, Rota was obsolete and was replaced, but RF Heartland Point remained open during the 1970s as a range control radar, before finally closing in 1980. The old RF camp was finally demolished in 1987, and the site passed on to Nats, who are the present users. The foundations of the old RF buildings are still visible today, as is the foundations of the old 1950s era Rota radar array, which you can visit. Unfortunately, the old RAF camp and its ruins are all on private property and are fenced off. But you can visit the Rotar Radar Head site, and there is a small historical info board placed there to mark the spot. From the Nats Radar site, I'm going to pan south now to, across the cove to our next location, which is the Coast Guard Lookout Post, or it's more accurate to describe it as the Coast Guard Radio Station. What is here now is a 1960s, 1970s era building. Although called a lookout, the building doesn't seem to have ever been used in that role. Rather, it was a maritime ship-to-shore radio station maintained by the Coast Guard uh, during the 1960s and 70s. 
Today, though it has the same role, it's no longer manned and it's more or less a remote antenna site and radio rebroadcast station. Even if the building isn't very exciting, it's certainly worth climbing up here for the best view of the Heartland Peninsula and also a view of the Heartland Lighthouse. I'll cover the lighthouse in a second, but there is an info board up here which directs you to another historical feature, the wreck of the MS Joanna. Fairly recently in historical terms, the MS Joanna, which is Panamanian registered, ran aground on the Heartland Point rocks on the 31st of December 1982. The Joanna was carrying bulk wheat from Rotterdam to Barry in Wales. She was unsalvageable and was left to break up on the rocks. And this is the MS Joanna today, and in all honesty, I think you'll struggle to see what's left of the ship on the rocks. The action of the sea has more or less completely reclaimed the steelwork. Not nearly as good as my last shipwreck exploration, the RMS Mulheim in Senen, about 100 miles to the south of here. Now, if you want to see a real shipwreck exploration, click the card in the top right hand corner. Now, I wouldn't exaggerate and call the path down from the lookout treacherous, but it is hard work, particularly when an Atlantic gale is blowing full force in your face. But we're going to persevere and we're going to continue our tour of the peninsula. This time we're going to head down and look at a maritime disaster that was man-made and this time cost lives. About 400 metres south of the lookout on the coastal path is a little known World War I memorial stone which is the land-based memorial to the sinking of HM hospital ship Glenout Castle on the 26th of February 1918. The Glenark Castle was torpedoed by a German U-boat and sunk 20 miles west-northwest of this memorial stone in the Bristol Channel. Of the 182 crew and medical staff on board, only 29 survived. The ship, of course, was protected under the Geneva Conventions and was sailing at night fully lit en route for France to pick up casualties from the Western Front. As news of the sinking of the Glenelg Castle circulated around the Western world, it was quickly declared a war crime. After the armistice at the end of 1918 and the surrender of the Imperial German fleet, the U-boat captain was arrested by the United Kingdom authorities and he was held for a time in the Tower of London. However, due to legal arguments surrounding the Versailles Treaty, he was released and returned to Germany for trial back in Germany. However, no further action was taken against him. Our final location in this video, the landmark which should be the jewel in the crown of Heartland Point, the Victorian era Heartland Point Lighthouse, is sadly denied to us. The access road is about as unwelcoming as you can get. But, in fairness, this is for good reason. The access road down to the lighthouse is a severe landslide risk and therefore the owners of the lighthouse, Trinity House, have closed it to the public for safety reasons. Construction of Heartland Point Lighthouse began in 1873 and the lighthouse was finally opened at the end of 1874. It is of typical Victorian era British Trinity House lighthouse construction. It originally had accommodation for four keepers and their families, families being allowed because it was a shore station with an access road up to Heartland Point. After a century in service, in 1984 the lighthouse was fully automated and it remains to this day in operation but completely unmanned. With the access road closed, the only way to view the lighthouse today is from the Coast Guard radio station lookout. For over 50 years the lighthouse has been beset with structural problems, from cliff erosion to landslides on the access road. Trinity House has spent millions of pounds sterling underpinning the cliffs. And in the late 1980s, Trinity House demolished the keeper's accommodation to create a helipad for maintenance access that didn't rely on the access road. In 2015, to cut their losses, Trinity House put this Grade 2 listed building on the market for £550,000, given the amount of facilitating work the cliffs need, which would run into millions, the building did not sell. Well, that concludes our tour of this very niche part of the English countryside. 
I hope it's been useful to you, particularly if you're flying from the heliport, but more so if you're visiting the peninsula on a day trip. I hope I've given you some conversational points to make your trip more interesting. As it's so niche, though, I'm not going to make any money on YouTube from this, to be honest. I've done it as a public service. For that reason, I would really appreciate it if you gave me a thumbs up, or even consider subscribing to my channel, because I have lots of interesting stuff, much more interesting than this video. Have a look. Anyway, thanks for watching. Bye now.